We're going to be talking about things that help early dementia, age-associated memory impairment, neurodegenerative diseases, stroke, traumatic brain injury, ADD, ADHD, learning disabilities, dyslexia, as well as helping healthy people's brains work better. So we're going to be talking about cholinergic agents, more than just prescription cholinesterase inhibitors, nutrients, herbs, melatonin, nootropic drugs, neurofeedback and brain stimulation, and specific mind, body, and breathing practices. So stroke and TBI increase the risk of dementia. 50% of patients with vascular impairment develop dementia in five years. Stroke doubles your risk of dementia. So that agents that improve stroke recovery, interestingly, also improve early symptoms of dementia. And things that improve traumatic brain injury recover, recovery may also reduce the risk of dementia. So more natural cholinergic enhancing agents include galantamine, which is where razodine came from, okay, huperzine from China, centrophenoxine, several thousand papers on centrophenoxine since it first came out of Europe about 50 years ago, acetyl-O-carnitine and CDP-choline. There are a few other things, but I wanted to focus on the things for which there's the most data. So galanthus is a plant found in Eastern Europe and Russia, well known for hundreds of years, used in herbal medicine. And it is from which uh, razodine was derived, it's, it has nicotinic allosteric receptor modulators, multiple natural modulators. A German company knew about the natural use of this herb and derived what we now call razodine or galantamine from that. They thought it was the most powerful modulator, but there are numerous modulators. Some of the really good neurologists I work with from Columbia would say that it, it looks to them like it works better than the prescription stuff in most cases. Uh, it's comparable to cholinesterase inhibitors in many ways, although a little bit different. Uh, it is much better tolerated. There is much less GI upset than the prescription drugs. Galantamine and others are preparations on the market. Huperzine is used in China for at least 3,000 years, not only for early dementia, but to reduce inflammation for fever and infection it is very well tolerated, and the dose in the latest double-blind randomized placebo control trial was 200 micrograms twice a day, but some more recent data is suggesting maybe more is better. Centrophenoxine is also known in Europe as meclofenoxate. The first brand was called Lucidril, and it is a condensation of dimethylaminoethanol, and a plant auxin, which seems to enhance the absorption into the brain and into the cells. Okay? Very different from just using dimethylaminoethanol. And it has numerous actions. It increases choline levels. It increases neuronal and glial energy metabolism. It very much helps cellular membrane fluidity, is very good in hypoxic states, activates the reticular system, decreases membrane lipid and organelle within the cell lipid peroxidation. It takes away lipofusions. Lipofusion builds up the, in the brain, the heart, and the skin as mammals get older and gums up the works. And it works even better when it's combined with the paracetam group of drugs and ginkgo. Anybody use this? Okay, so just a couple of you know about it. It's extremely helpful. And, and it also goes well combined with Aricept and Exelon and Amenda. Okay, so it's been used in Europe for a lot of things, brain injury, stroke, dementias, drug intoxication. Rarely you can get too much cholinergic activation. Okay, you'll see myoclonus, muscle, muscle tension, tics, rarely irritability. These things are quite rare with it. It's very well tolerated. Generally, dosing is 500 to 2,000 milligrams a day. Acetylocarnitine. How many of you use acetylocarnitine? Okay, so more of you know about that. Uh, increases cho choline 
acetylcholine membrane phospholipids, improves mitochondrial energy and other pathways, increases uh, nerve growth factor binding, decreases excitotoxic amino acids, increases dopamine activity, and has other benefits. It looks like it's extremely good for reducing effects of early diabetes within nerve cells and other blood tissues, uh, vascular type tissues. So, used for ischemia, used for diabetic and other neuropathies, mildly prevents Alzheimer's, okay, if it started before age 60. Can be useful in geriatric vascular depression. Side effects, heartburn if taken on an empty stomach. Rarely it will cause mania in a bipolar patient, probably from dopamine release. Uh, and it's common to find a 500 milligram strength on the market. 1,500 milligrams twice a day is not an uncommon dosing in studies of cerebrovascular disease or, or geriatric vascular depression. And there's evidence that it delays brain aging. Uh, there are over 30 studies showing it slows age-related mental decline, slows progression of Alzheimer's, and has been tested in numerous other things, including peripheral nerve injury and neuropathy. Now, there's also data using acetylocarnitine, which seems to probably, this has not been well tested, but it looks like clinically, acetylocarnitine has better absorption into brain cells. L-carnitine, particularly propionyl L-carnitine, has good absorption into heart and voluntary muscle. So sometimes the two together have benefits. This is from a study of chronic fatigue using the either, either alone or the combination for 24 weeks. Acetylocarnitine helped ratings of mental fatigue. Propionylocarnitine helped physical fatigue. All three groups showed improved attention. There's also data that the two of these are equivalent to Viagra over time in patients with relatively mild to moderate erectile dysfunction. And again, that may have to do with insulin glucose properties. CDP choline. How many of you use CDP choline? So again, only a few of you. Um, interesting. It has many, many double-blind controlled studies, particularly in traumatic brain injury. Improves cell, nerve cell membrane integrity. It is neuroprotective. It improves mitochondrial activity. Is good in hypoxic states. Improves lipids uh, in the membranes of the organelles and the nerve cell. Improves SAMI levels and methylation in animal studies. Decreases inflammatory chemicals in the brain. Improves levels of these transmitters. And even a relatively small dose quickly, within a half an hour, raises ATP and creatine levels in anterior cingulate cortical cells. 